Well, welcome everyone, and uh, we're here today for some very exciting news and uh, very pleased to announce that uh, Bristol Community College and the Fall River Public School System uh, has received a $300,000 Mass Grad Gateway to College Award. And this comes from the Gateway Foundation, which of course, as you know, is associated with the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Uh, the public school system and, um, and Bristol Community College have been working uh, uh, on this project uh, since about 2005, and we're trying to uh, uh, get all the details in, uh, in order and in a row, and uh, we're ready to go at this point, and this is a very exciting day. Um, the Department of uh, Elementary and Secondary Education receives the money uh, from uh, the uh, Gates Gateway Foundation and then uh, disperses the money across the Commonwealth as they see fit. Uh, and of course, so, so this is a wonderful announcement of an award-winning uh, uh, grant uh, that the public schools and uh, Bristol Community College have put in uh, uh, jointly. Uh, the goal is to address high school dropout prevention and recovery. The idea is to uh, recover uh, current high school dropouts, ages 18 to 22, and uh, to bring them back to the academic pathways to earn a degree, their high school degree, uh, and also uh, to move forward with uh, college credit at Bristol Community College at the same time. This can be done through something that we're both already doing, and that is the dual enrollment program. And the dual enrollment program, as you may recall, uh, allows uh, high school students to take a college course that acts for two, uh, dual credit and, and dual enrollment. And that is that it works toward their high school degree as well as college credit uh, toward a college degree uh, simultaneously. And it's a wonderful program that's catching on all over the uh, country. Uh, very popular, I think Bristol Community College uh, and the uh, uh, public school systems in the region, uh, we have the highest number of people enrolled in dual enrollment in the, in the state. Uh, and lot, many of those are from the Durfee, uh, uh, Durfee High School, and, and we're very proud of that uh, relationship that we have. So uh, there's a long history of serving high school students through dual enrollment. This, this new uh, activity uh, blends in very nicely with that award and with our previous history. Now, if you know um, something that's uh, not a very good news about the region, uh, not just Fall River, is that the levels of educational attainment and the levels of literacy are not very high. In fact, they're low. And we want to uh, take that uh, very personally as we move forward. It's our job is to create educational opportunities and uh, uh, for, the re uh, for the citizens of the region, uh, and especially in, uh, today we're talking about uh, Fall River itself. Uh, we've got to do something to enhance uh, those levels of uh, literacy and educational attainment. And not only for the benefit of the individuals, but also for the benefit of the region. Economic development, workforce development, all rely on education. And uh, the co increasingly complex uh, society and global uh, economy that we have uh, virtually requires some high, uh, higher education credential uh, for entry level jobs. It may have one time been an eighth grade education two centuries ago and last century a high school degree uh, to get uh, to uh, enter the employment uh, at a very good level, a comfortable level, but uh, uh, now it's going to require that same, those same kind of jobs in this highly technological environment are going to require some higher education credentials. And that's why it's so important to recover uh, high school dropouts uh, in the city bring them back into the mainstream of academic uh, environment uh, and uh, move them forward uh, so that they can have a better life through education. And of course, uh, by, by doing that, the society benefits and they become productive, tax-paying uh, citizens uh, in the community. So this, are, uh, uh, this is just a wonderful opportunity that we could not have done by ourselves, the public schools or Bristol Community College, because of the resources required uh, to make this program uh, uh, successful. 
these students will be directed on a pathway uh, that not only complements their high school education, finish that degree, but also uh, earn college credits simultaneously. Now, they don't have to come to Bristol Community College at the, after they earn that high school degree, even though they've taken uh, Bristol Community College courses. Of course, we want them to, uh, but uh, the idea is to make sure that they stay in, in the world of education and continue progressing on the pathways that will lead them to these academic credentials. Uh, this is a very important uh, uh, program, and you're going to hear from uh, some of our uh, guests today as well uh, about why it's so important for the city and why it's so important for the community. It's my honor to introduce to you now someone who is a champion, uh, not only for Bristol Community College and the public school system, but someone who has long uh, emphasized the importance of education, and for many of the reasons that I spoke about, uh, workforce development and economic development within the city. And uh, ever since he became mayor, uh, he has been very uh, outspoken and advocate and champion for education uh, in general and Bristol Community College in particular. We're in his city and uh, uh, we're glad to be here and he's glad to have us and it's a great uh, partnership. So it's my honor to introduce to you Mayor Will Flanagan. Thank you, President Sprager, and it's always great uh, to be back here at Bristol Community College. And today's announcement uh, is an important announcement in education. For our community to receive an award of over $300,000 uh, to improve the graduation rate here in the city of Fall River is going to improve the quality of lives for approximately 225 students. And as a city, we are doing everything we can to improve our school system. And we've made some great strides over the last year and a half. We've seen our graduation rate increase. We've seen our dropout rates decrease. More students are being placed in advanced placement courses. And for the first time in a long time, we made AYP in English language arts. But even though we've been able to make those improvements, there's still students who are checking out of the public school system. Uh, there are still students who are dropping out and getting involved in a life of crime or, or just getting involved in something that they should not be involved in. And what this Mass Grad Gateway to College Startup Award will do for our community is that it will help our city identify those students who are on the verge of dropping out. It will also help us recruit the students who have already dropped out of high school. And our goal is to get them here to Bristol Community College so that they can once again do the coursework that will help them earn their high school diploma. But what makes this partnership even better than that is that they'll also have an opportunity to receive credits towards their associate's degree. And when we are living in such a difficult economic time, when it's difficult for those with degrees to find economic opportunities. It's so important that we do what we can to continue to improve our education to make us more marketable uh, in the workforce. And this gateway to college was first implemented in Portland, Oregon uh, by Bill and Melinda Gates and through their Gates Foundation. And it has been a model that has been used nationwide. And to attract it here to the city of Fall River, to have our superintendent and President Sprager and myself as the chair of the Fall River School Committee being able to partner uh, to improve the quality of lives for, for individuals here in the city of Fall River, it's a great day. Uh, so it's, I'm proud to be able to enter into this partnership. We're going to serve over 200 uh, young adults who are, who at some point in their lives believed that school was not for them and we're gonna get them back into school. We're gonna get them back inside the classroom we're going to get them the credits they need to their high school diploma, and we're going to get them enrolled in, in community college courses. So at the end of the day, when they graduate from BCC, they're either going to go on to higher learning or they're going to enter the workforce. But no matter what they decide to do, they're going to have a solid foundation which will last them uh, for the rest of their lives. So it's an honor for me to be here with you. It's a great day for the city of Fall River. It's a great day for Bristol Community College. And I look forward to working with you on this project over the next three years. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You can see uh, why uh, he is such an uh, avowed champion for education. It might be a good idea to think of this project as a three-legged stool. And you just met two of the legs, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and that is that the city, you know, the mayor is in, uh, mayor is very uh, powerful uh, uh, influence in, in making this happen. Bristol Community College stands ready to uh, make it happen. And I'd like to present to you uh, uh, the superintendent, Meg Mayo Brown, who has, uh, uh, I won't refer to you as the third leg, right? <laughs> Uh, I, uh, you can see that there are many details in a plan like this, and especially when you get in a, a global foundation like the, uh, like the uh, Gates Foundation, uh, and now you have the uh, state uh, educational apparatus as well, the Department of Higher Education, as well as the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So there are a number of details to be worked out, and I can tell you that this simply would not happen this project as much as we would like to uh, do it and the mayor would like to do it, it would not have happened without the great support of uh, Superintendent Meg Mayo Brown. And very grateful to her for all she's done uh, to make this day happen and for all she's going to do in the future, working with us uh, to be sure that we have a huge success. Uh, the mayor mentioned 225 students and that is our goal, but I'm sure all of, uh, all of the partners hope that we can far exceed that and move forward with dropout prevention and dropout recovery. So it's my honor now to introduce a friend and another great champion of education, Superintendent Meg Mayo Brown. Thank you, President Spriga. It's good to know that I'm the, the third leg. Um, we were just commenting, um, if you don't have the third leg, we can't do this without one another because you'll fall down, right? We, you need all three legs for this, for this partnership. I, I just can't thank uh, Bristol Community College enough for their persistence in this work. This has been a long time coming since 2005, and it's through BCC's persistence that we see the program uh, come to life uh, this, this year. This provides yet another pathway for our at-risk youth. It provides them an opportunity to continue on the path to gain their uh, college and career skills success skills that they will need to have successful lives and it would not be possible again without the partnership through the school committee that approved this program a number of months ago and has committed to long-term funding through through the years to come as well as BCC's um, critical involvement. I'd like to take the opportunity to, uh, to introduce two of our staff members who have who, one who has led this work along with BCC as a representative for Fall River Public Schools over the past couple, couple of years, and another who will serve sort of as a liaison to the program, making sure that we identify students who would benefit greatly from this program and remain in school. So it's my pleasure to uh, introduce the principal of the Resiliency Preparatory School, Principal Omari Walker, and our department head for guidance at Durfee uh, Durfee High School, Amy Braunhart. Good afternoon. So in 2005, 2006, um, we had the opportunity. Um, I went out with a team, Sarah, Steve, to Portland and learned a lot about this um, program called Gateway to College. And we came back very excited and wanting to um, enroll our students um, into this and we ran into a few hiccups along the way as to how we can make this happen but in the end um, through the persistence of the superintendent and, and the president of the university and the mayor um, I'm glad that we've been able to pull this together. When we think of high school dropouts we all get different images of, of who they are, what they look like, um, why it is they've, they've dropped out of school. Um, this program is really geared towards um, providing students a different experience. You know, um, you know, if we offer kids who haven't had um, success in the traditional high school environment, the same environment um, either um, that they just came from or that they left, um, we're bound to get the same results. So giving them the opportunity to come onto a college campus, um, be around a more mature um, student population, um, look at um, what other experiences are here and, and other things that they'll be exposed to 
um, in addition to just the curriculum, is such an advantage for our students. And, and I feel fortunate for the city of Fall River um, and for the students in Fall River that they're going to have this opportunity. And I, and I thank um, the, the folks here in this room, um, especially my, my superintendent, for really supporting this um, initiative. And I look forward to um, Durfee getting involved here and taking, a, <laughs> taking an active role and lead in, in making sure that we um, do the absolute best job by our students and by the school um, in order to make this happen. So thank you. I think it's exciting. First, you know, thank you to everybody for our partnerships. And it's exciting when the adults can get together and pull together the pieces that need to work. Uh, to make these events happen for students and these opportunities happen for students. As Omari mentioned, students drop out of school for a wide array of reasons. And although we have many opportunities in place in Fall River, I think this is a piece that's going to help create the relevance. And oftentimes students don't find the relevance in education in the hype of the rest of the pieces of their world that are crashing and burning at that time. And it's comforting to know that our students are going to come to a place where the relationships are as sound as they are at the high school or at Res Resiliency Preparatory School, and also that the relationships among the adults will be the safeguards that help ensure that our students are successful. Because of the partnership and the relationships, of, relationships among the adults who are in play, I truly feel that we will supersede the 250, but more importantly than that, that students will begin to find relevance in education, find success from their relevance, and outcomes will be a better city, a better place for all of us to grow and live. So thank you very much for the support. We are eager to begin this work. And if we can do what we've done with dual enrollment, then we will forever change our city. So thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. I, I should point out that the success that we've had in our dual enrollment program is largely uh, uh, attributable to the students we're able to attract uh, from Durfee. And that in turn, those students in turn, the presence of those students is largely attributable to Amy. And I thank you. I know you would, you would be the first to share the, uh, the uh, thanks and the appreciation, but it uh, just wouldn't happen without you, Amy. Thank you. And uh, uh, same with uh, Omari. Uh, just wouldn't, uh, this whole project would not have happened. He goes way back to, he doesn't look that old, but he goes way back to 2005 uh, when we went out. We sent a team out to Portland, Oregon, uh, which is kind of the headquarter, Portland Community College out there is the headquarters uh, for this uh, particular uh, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation project. Uh, we're very excited uh, speaking about uh, dual enrollment. Uh, uh, Amy has worked very closely with our own director of dual enrollment, uh, Margaret O'Brien, uh, and uh, we're very grateful for her work, as, uh, which also we're approaching 300 uh, in dual enrollment from around the region, not just Durfee, but uh, we certainly want to uh, continue that as well. And uh, another uh, great champion uh, for this program and for dual enrollment and for students in general is someone uh, that I'd like to introduce to you now, and that's our Vice President for Student Services, uh, Stephen Ozog. Steve went to uh, Portland on that original trip and has uh, helped hammer out all of the details that are required uh, to make this a, a success and make it happen. Steve Ozog. Thank you, Thank you President Sprague. Uh, just a point of clarification, clearly the superintendent is a lot more courteous than, than I am, perhaps, or a little more political, politically savvy than I am. What she said wasn't exactly what I whispered in her ear. What I whispered in her ear was, it sounds like, as the third leg, that the mayor and the president can't stand without you. Um, she was a little more uh, politically correct, I guess, than I was. Uh, before I get into the actual description of the program, just a little cheerleading of my own as one of the members who have been working with the team to to try to make this a reality for five or six years now. This really, really is an exciting day for the college, for the city, for the school department, but mostly for the students, for the students who are going to have this amazing opportunity. Because I, I think this all boils down to three points, and the first one for me is it's about second chances. We all wish at some point in our life that we had a second chance to do something, and very often we don't. And we all know the expression, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. But these students now have an opportunity for a second chance. And, and as someone already pointed out, because what we want is we want them to put aside, put aside the fact that it didn't work the first time around. And we want to give them that opportunity to, to, to do it again in this different environment. 
you know, this, this generation may be technology driven and they may live in a technological world, but we as human beings still don't have an undo button. And until we do have that planted in us, I guess, there'll always be this need to provide opportunities for second chances. Another thing I want to point out from a cheerleading point of view is that providing this opportunity to me is not just something that's a good thing to do, I actually see it as an obligation. I see this as an obligation whether we are educators, whether we are civic leaders, whether we are just concerned citizens, or whether we are just caring human beings. This is an obligation to give these students a chance, a chance at something that didn't work the first time, but now maybe with the right mix can work so that they also can have this opportunity to, to move forward and do something better and have a better life for themselves and their families. So I don't see it as just something that's a nice thing to do. I really see it as this is our obligation. And I think it's that obligation that inspires all of us to actually have the motivation to, to go forward and do this. And the last thing I want to talk about before going into the mechanics of the program is this is a plug to the students as they hear this word in whatever fashion that they get this word that's coming out of here today. That I want them to understand and embrace this opportunity. And while they do that, to understand that along with that comes the challenge. And so I'm issuing a challenge to the students who will ultimately come in this program to understand what an amazing opportunity that lies before you and decide what are you going to invest in order to make this happen. Because I believe it was Omari, as he pointed out, if we just give them the same old, same old, and more importantly, if they come as the same old them, it's not going to work. What are the students willing to invest to make this happen? What are they willing to forego? And, and to illustrate that, I was talking to a student the other night in New Bedford, where we also launched a similar program just this past week, uh, a middle college uh, program in New Bedford. And I, talked, I was talking to a young lady on Monday night, and I said to her, in my very excited way, so is this the best, most exciting thing you've ever done in your life? And she said, no, it's the second most exciting and best thing I've done in my life. So I, once again, perhaps in my naivete, like earlier, um, said, oh, what was the most important thing? She said, having my daughter. So of course I acknowledged that, I said, I understand it. And that's, you know, that's a wonderful thing. I said, how old is she? And she said, three weeks. So I said, wow, this is quite a commitment on your part then. And, you know, she said, I so want to be with my daughter, but I know this is my key to a better life for her and me. So that's what we hope from the students that we will ultimately accept in the program, that they are understanding that. So now a little bit about the mechanics of the program. First, the numbers, you've heard the number 225. That is the number that we expect to serve through the actual funding from the, uh, uh, the combination of the Gates, uh, Gateway to College Network and DESE, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Educa Education. But of course, the program is expected to be self-sustaining, and in the long run, we hope to, to enroll many more students than that 225. That 225 is during the three years that the funding, uh, that the funding from the department uh, is sustained. After the three years, the program works on a recovery of Chapter 70 funds. Students who have dropped out of high school no longer are, are being uh, are under the umbrella of Chapter 70 funding from the state of Massachusetts. By virtue of enrolling in this program and becoming official Bristol Community College students while being enrolled in the high school, that Chapter 70 money comes back. The per pupil allocation from the state comes back into the picture here. And so in, in negotiation with the school department, we work out a formula where Bristol Community College gets a piece of that funding for every student who comes in the program. We will get a piece of that funding and that's the money that will sustain the program over time. So long after the initial investment of $300,000 $300, is gone, that's what will sustain the program. And so we, we expect this to go on forever for as long as I continue to be here at the college and uh, hopefully all of you that are in the audience who are from the college or from the school department. This should, this should go on uh, in perpetuity, to use a term that many in the college here are uh, used to. You've heard uh, already several times that the program runs as a dual enrollment program, meaning while they're enrolled in official Bristol Community College courses as Bristol, Com Bristol Community College students, the credits that they receive work in both directions. 
backwards towards their high school diploma, forward towards on their college transcript. At some point, when they complete their high school requirements, they will officially graduate from high school with a high school degree, not an evening diploma, not a GED. They graduate with a high school degree. And at that point, we will sit and talk to them about, here's your transcript. Here's, a, here's all the college credits you have right now at the time that you're graduating from high school. And where do we go from here? And the president already spoke about that. Obviously, we hope that they will all continue to enroll here, as they have in the other colleges throughout the country that have this program right now. And just a little clarification on that. This program has been around since 2003, started in Portland, Oregon, as you've already heard. But there's still only 33 or 34 programs nationwide. So the fact that Fall River is one of them at this relatively early stage is quite impressive. Uh, in fact, only 30 some programs in the entire country and only a handful of states have a gateway to college program right now. So, so we clearly are uh, in the forefront of this initiative. The funding me mechanism, as I said, we get the initial uh, allocation from the DESC. That gives us all the startup uh, monies that we need to get the program running, to pay for that first cohort of students, to, to hire the staff, to get everything underway. And slowly over the next three years, that money gets slowly it gets phased out. And by the end of the third year, we're on a completely self-sustaining basis with the Chapter 7, the money that I uh, outlined already. And lastly, because these students will be officially Bristol Community College students, it's important to note that they will have all rights and responsibilities of a Bristol Community College student and be required to go through all the same processes that all students here at BCC do. They, they'll go through the, uh, um, the screening process, the skills assessment, uh, te placement testing process. They'll be placed in the appropriate courses accordingly, according to their uh, assessed skills at that point. And then all the services that BCC offers will be available to them with the hopes that when they graduate from high school and their official tie to the Gateway program ends, that they will now be in a very, very good position to just continue the education because that's ultimately their goal. And that's ultimately what we want from this whole program. The, the opportunity for these students to say, I want to be part of that. I can make my life better. I can make my life better for my family. I want to be a partner with all the other partners already. So let's get to work and make this happen. Thank you very much. Well, that, uh, that pretty well outlines the program. I, I've got to ask uh, the superintendent and uh, Steve about basketball and soccer players, uh, which team they would play for if they're... But you, you heard it. <laughs> Good question. It, it is terrific that we provide this uh, opportunity in education. And uh, the staff will be... We're on the uh, uh, search now for the uh, early staff. We have a director uh, position uh, for uh, the Gates uh, uh, Academy here. Uh, we have also uh, a learning resource uh, coordinator who will do advising and uh, uh, counseling uh, and registration for the students and a staff associate as well. So but that, we hope that's only the beginning because the program is going to grow so, so large that we're going to need much more, uh, much more help. But that, that is the way uh, we intend to be, uh, launch the beginning. Classes will be held here at the, at the uh, Bristol Community College. Uh, and we'll work that out with the superintendent. It should, should it be more convenient or comfortable to operate in a school uh, classroom or uh, whatever is, is uh, it, we're able to work out. And now um, I'd like to, uh, if I could, uh, open up for questions and invite the superintendent and the mayor uh, to uh, join us and the Vice President Ozog, and we'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have about this wonderful program. The first cohort is scheduled to start in January, the spring 2012. We are advertising to fill those positions right now that the president just outlined. And as soon as those positions are filled, the director of the program, the resource specialist working with the high school liaison, will start screening applicants and looking at potential students. And classes will start at the beginning of our regular spring semester. And how many students can be expected to do this first round? Cohorts will be uh, in groups of 25, and we will accept two cohorts for the spring semester, and then add on a new co one, one to two cohorts every semester after that through the life of the program. Does it work out 
No, they're actually doing them simultaneously. So the student comes to us lacking X number of high school units in order to graduate. We will look at what those course equivalencies are, give them the appropriate, appropriate Bristol Community College course that meets that requirement. They will take that course at the college here, and so the credits will then go backwards towards the high school diploma and forward on their college transcript. So it's happening simultaneously. Each course would be one semester. And a one semester course with us would be the equivalent of one unit at the high school. The students may be enrolled in the program for any number of semesters, depending on how many units they need to finish high school. To get the first cohort and to get every cohort, essentially, is we will be working with the school department to identify students who have recently dropped out, may have been dropped out for a while, or on the verge of dropping out. One of the things we've learned through this process is that students advertise very often when they're going to drop out. It's, it's very often not a surprise. There are a lot of, either there are a lot of warning signs or they've actually told someone, on my 16th birthday or next week or next month or next semester, I'm, just, I'm leaving, I'm done here. So we'll be working with the school department to identify those and jointly the school department liaison and the college staff will be working to interview them, screen them, look at what they need, see if they are a proper fit for the program. There may be lots of students out there who fit that initial description, but they may not be appropriate for the program for one way or another. They may not have the motivation. It may not, they may look at what we're asking them to do and say, this isn't for me. So there'll be an intensive screening process to make sure that we're accepting students who actually can succeed and want to succeed and have that motivation and desire to succeed. As you've heard earlier, if I could just add to that, uh, there are any number of reasons why people drop out, not the uh, stereotypical reason that you probably have in mind. Uh, and um, uh, personal issues and health and uh, family, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, so you might imagine there's a broad, broad range of the number of units that are needed to complete their degree. Uh, some may have dropped out just with a unit or two to go. Some uh, maybe as soon as they turn 16 may still be sophomores at that stage. So in high school. So there are you know, any number of a range of uh, opportunities for these students and working closely with the school department uh, and with Amy Bronhart and uh, our own uh, uh, staff here at Bristol, uh, we're going to try to be sure that we accommodate those various needs. Uh, because as been mentioned time and time again, you can't just keep doing the same thing and expect different results. Uh, so uh, thank you, Steve. All of the colleges that have a current gateway program, both in the state of Massachusetts and nationwide, are community colleges. It's built on the community college partnership, the, the uh, national network and the community colleges. In Massachusetts, there are three other schools that currently have a gateway program, so we are the fourth. In fact, Massachusetts has been identified by the national network as their key state. They would like a gateway to college program in every community college in Massachusetts. They've targeted this state as one of the states first and first among all others to make sure that it's blanketed throughout the entire state. And also the uh, super, if I could add again, the superintendent mentioned the, uh, uh, quite rightfully, uh, the, the school committee uh, and the support of the school committee. And I would like to add that we've had the support of the uh, uh, Bristol Community College uh, Board of Trustees. It just couldn't happen without the school committee and without the Board of Trustees. And also, uh, Commissioner uh, Mitch Chester of the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and Commissioner Richard Freeland of the Department of Higher Education. The Department of Higher Education, all both departments are uh, fully supportive of this. And uh, as you heard, there are other, other examples of this in the Commonwealth, and, uh, we're, but we're gonna be the best. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the end of that. Third and fourth chances, I, I certainly think, are on the table. If, if a student were to come into the program and then at some point it doesn't work again, obviously we would want to reassess the situation and what's going on here. I don't know that 
the program is designed to say, well, you can have a third and a fourth and a fifth chance, but I can tell you and give you a commitment on the part of the college here today that we certainly will take a look at that on, a, on an individual basis. We're not, I mean, the whole goal here is what do we need to do to get it right? What do, what do we, as those people charged with this obligation that I talked about, and what does a student need to do to make this right? And if it takes more than one time, we're more than willing to, to entertain that opportunity. Anything else? Well, once again, I'd like to thank, uh, and of course, we're available for questions at all times, uh, so not just this, this particular hour. Uh, <clears throat> but once again, I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Flanagan, uh, Superintendent McMail Brown, uh, all of the people that are here, Omari Walker, Amy Braunhart, uh, Margaret uh, O'Brien is here from our dual enrollment program, Vice President Steve Ozog, and thank you for coming. Some of the people in the audience are people that went back uh, to that 2005 trip in, uh, in Portland, Oregon. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that uh, everyone feels very happy that we've come to this, uh, this far. It's not a success yet, we haven't started, uh, but we will make it a success. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.